guys welcome back to the 12 days of foundation we are moving right along to another foundation this one is brand new from the drugstore it's the physicians formula healthy foundation if you missed any of my previous reviews I will link to it down below and as always there will be timestamps in the description box but let's go ahead and get started this foundation is the latest to physicians formulas line of complexion products comes in a really beautiful glass bottle and you're getting a full fluid ounce in here which is the average size of a foundation depending on where you live in Canada the United States it's gonna retail for around 15 to 20 dollars they've also begun an e-commerce site so you can buy straight from physiciansformula.com and here in Canada it's gonna be available wherever physicians formula is sold starting this month moving into January so kind of keep your eyes peeled They've also released a ton of new stuff, which I have been testing out, and you'll see a new video on that in the new year, but I definitely wanted to get this foundation review up as soon as possible. There's a huge doe foot applicator in here, so if you do pick it up, be sure of that to note of that, because as soon as I saw this, I was like, trying to pull at it and I was like what the hell but it, there is like a gigantor doe foot applicator in here I like that application I think it makes it really easy but that's kind of going to be personal preference the biggest difference or kind of thing about this foundation is that there are 16 different shades in the range which is by far the biggest physician's formula has ever done and you've heard me complain time and time again about Physicians Formula's shade ranges and how limiting they are because I wanna try the products too and I'm not even that dark. So I'm really excited to see that they have extended the, the shade range. I know a lot of people are gonna have opinions on this and say it's too late, I don't wanna buy it, they're only doing it because it's trendy. Fine, you're, you're welcome to have your opinion, spend your money where you want. But for me personally, I have been asking this brand to extend their shade range that's my cat for years and they have now extended it so I appreciate that and we'll see where it goes and, I, and I'm glad to see that everybody is kind of waking up to the fact that shade ranges matter and you know everybody's money is worthwhile so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my face we will talk about claims I also have their primer which I mean I probably shouldn't be using this because when do I ever use an illuminating primer but let's try it anyways it's the spotlight illuminating primer so I'm gonna put that on this half of my face I'm gonna be wearing the shade DW2 today which is dark warm 2 I also have DM3 I think it is so I may need to reach for that as well I'm not totally sure so let's go ahead and start over here it says it's a medium to full coverage it also has an SPF of 20 in there and it's got antioxidants, vitamins, hyaluronic acid. One thing I really like is that they've actually put the undertones in the name of the foundation, because that's super helpful, especially at the drugstore where you don't get the chance to test things out. For the most part, there's not as many testers, and in Canada anyways, the return policy for drugstore makeup is just not that good. So it's really nice to see, because it makes it a little bit easier when you're picking out your shade. This seems to be a pretty good shade match for me. I'm going to build it up. And I will have my popular shades down below that I am in like more popular foundations if you're trying to match yourself. And I'll also have a blog post down below comparing these swatches to some more popular foundations. And I'm using a brush today. I prefer a brush in general with just about any foundation. And it's blending out super easy. I am interested to see how this is gonna hold up on oily skin though because words like healthy <laughs> scare me a little bit. You can see what it looks like with two layers there. I don't know that I would necessarily get to full coverage without building it up a lot, but it definitely gives really beautiful coverage. Um, it's like a, it's a, a pretty, pretty true medium in my opinion. I've given the foundation some time to set and you can see it definitely has quite a natural glow to it. It doesn't seem to state flat out the finish of this foundation, but it's calling itself healthy and skin-like and lightweight. So I feel like that is kind of the look that's going for. It's definitely not like a super matte flat look. And the side that I used the illuminating primer on is definitely more illuminated for sure. And it actually looks a little bit smoother as well. So it seems like it could be a nice primer, but of course we'll see at the end of the day how it fares. Overall, I think that this foundation is a pretty true medium. I I think that getting it to full would take a lot of product if you could even get there because I did build it up quite a bit. If you want to get more coverage, use a brush, kind of stipple it into your skin. If you want a little bit less, you could always go with a beauty blender. Personal preference for me, I don't need something to be super full coverage all the time. So I do like the coverage that I got out of it. And if I really wanted to, I could have spot concealed as well. So I'm going to go ahead and powder my face because that definitely needs to happen. I will take some photos and I'll be right back. I have all of my makeup on now and everything as 
as always will be listed in the description box that I'm wearing on my face. I wanted to mention it, I double checked the website to see what the finish that they claim is and it does claim to have a satin finish. While I was there, let me just read it off for you because there's a bunch. It's also hypoallergenic, fragrance free, paraben free, gluten free, dermatologist approved, non-comedogenic, clinically tested, cruelty free and vegan and of course all of those things lead to it being good for sensitive skin or of course if you follow the vegan or cruelty free lifestyle that is something to consider as well. So moving into how it looked in photos, I was actually quite impressed across the board. I think it's because it has such a light coverage that any of the SPF that's in there that's going to give you a white cast isn't going to be as strong because it's not covering the majority like my skin is still showing through so here in my filming lighting i thought it looked really good you can see my freckles there's a nice sheen to my skin then i turned off my ring light took another photo and again i thought it looked really good super natural and skin like and then once i turned off all my lights in, in essentially a dark room with flash again it performed quite well and i think it has a lot to do with the fact that it is quite a bit more light coverage and the spf in there didn't seem to affect me too much. So I'm going to go ahead about my day and I will check back with you in some natural light. So here we are in front of some natural light. It has been a few hours since I put this foundation on. As you can see, there's definitely some oiliness kind of in my T-zone, definitely around my nose here. But otherwise, things look quite good. And I, I haven't looked at myself in the mirror, honestly, since I put the foundation on. And I'm really surprised to see that it's oily because it doesn't feel oily at all, which I definitely really appreciate. So I am going to just blot a little bit just to get rid of some of this excess oil. It has transferred a little bit, I've noticed, uh, when I've touched my face kind of accidentally but I haven't noticed anywhere where it's actually kind of patched off my skin, but it does seem to transfer a bit. And that is also probably because I'm oily. Um, when the oils start to come through, that's when the most transfer is bound to happen. I will say, however, the side that I primed doesn't look any more greasy than the unprimed side. And it actually, the, my pores look quite a bit uh, more smooth on this side, which I wasn't expecting from an illuminating primer. So I'm going to powder this up and I will check back with you guys in a few hours to see how it all held up. And yes, I'm wearing my check-in hoodie again. So here we are at the end of the day and I definitely have a little bit of shine to my skin so I'm going to do a little bit of blotting. But one thing that I really want to say that has totally blown me away is the primer. You know how I feel about primers for the most part. I don't love them. They don't do much for me. Especially something like an illuminating primer I would absolutely never reach for. Um, but I really actually think the prime side looks way better or just better than the unprimed side. And this is an illuminating primer under a foundation that had a satin finish so that blew me away I definitely have a little wear around my nose which I seem to get for the most part every day and then I do have a little bit of patchiness just down here I was kind of lying around today I'm not feeling great and I may have done a little bit of this so it has patched off a little bit because it was getting kind of oily on my skin so I definitely feel like transfer is an issue with this foundation if you're gonna to be touching your face or if you have oily skin if you have a more normal skin type or dry I don't think it'll be an issue but for me where I was oily that does kind of lift the foundation a little bit so now that I've touched up my face I think things look a lot better it's taken away that oily look to the skin it looks very smooth on the skin as well what I will say is that I think if you have normal combination even or dry skin this will definitely be a really nice foundation for you if you're looking for something lightweight with a skin like finish about medium coverage definitely nothing towards full this could be a great option especially because it has the SPF 20 in there, really nice kind of everyday foundation potentially. If you do have a more oily skin type and you wanted to try it because of the finish or the shade range or you're just curious like myself, I definitely recommend using a mattifying powder, mattifying primer. Also, I've been going the route of powdering my primer before my liquid foundation. I've really been enjoying that as well. I haven't tried it with this foundation, but it seems to work really well with just about anyone that I try. Overall, I think the foundation pretty much held its own up against my oily skin. I, I can't be too harsh on a foundation that doesn't claim to work for me. I mean, it does. Okay, it claims to be good for all skin types, but when you really look at the kind of attributes and, and descriptors that they give this foundation, it doesn't seem like something that would be geared towards oily skin. So it did kind of hold its own. My blush, bronzer, highlight is all still in place. I did get this little patch issue, but that is due to it getting kind of oily. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. And I did have some issues with transfer, but overall, I think it did a really good job holding up on my skin because my skin is quite oily and the kind of like all skin types claim for a foundation generally means that things aren't going to go so good for me. So kind of depends what you're looking for out of a foundation, but I think it is definitely something to try 
buy if you're looking for something of a more natural finish, something quite lightweight on the skin as well, especially if you have a more normal to a dry skin type for sure. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Stay tuned. I have more foundation reviews coming. And if you missed any of the previous reviews, they will all be linked down below along with blog posts with some of the new Physicians Formula items. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at SamanthaJNYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!